Now, I just want to actually close by saying a few things that you want to avoid if you want to keep your brain health. Things you want to avoid for better brain health. All right. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. In this video, we will learn from Dr. William Lee, a world-renowned physician, researcher, and author who has dedicated his career to understanding the science of health and disease prevention. Dr. Lee is a leading expert in the field of angiogenesis and has made groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of how what we eat and how we live can impact our health, particularly our brain health. Today, Dr. Lee will be guiding us through some of the most common bad habits that can negatively affect your brain. These habits, if left unchecked, can contribute to cognitive decline, memory issues, and other brain-related health problems. But the good news is that with Dr. Lee's insights, you can learn how to break these habits and protect your brain for the long term. Join us as Dr. William Lee shares his expert advice on what to avoid and how to make positive changes that will benefit your brain health now and in the future. Whether you're looking to sharpen your mind, prevent cognitive decline, or simply improve your overall well-being, this video is packed with practical tips and valuable insights. Let's listen to Dr. Lee tells us about the first bad habit. First, don't drink alcohol regularly. Now, I know alcohol is part of our society. So that's why I think I don't, I don't scold people about drinking alcohol. But you should know that alcohol is a toxin and your brain is especially sensitive. It kills your neurons. So, so you kill a little brain cells every time you have a drink. Look, the brain is pretty resilient. It'll bounce back. But this is why you shouldn't be drinking it regularly. You don't want to stun your brain every time you sit down for a meal. All right. And or drinking outside of a meal, too. All right. So I, I think that uh, there's a myth, by the way, uh, that a glass of red wine is good for you. Look, here's what's the case. Red wine tastes great. It's part of it's a it's a fine beverage to have, you know, for uh, social events. But there's nothing healthy about it. The alcohol and the red wine, the thing that gives you a buzz, kills brain cells. So if you want healthy brain cells, don't drink regularly. By the way, step up a notch to hard liquor. Now you're, as we talk about, a really, really um, hard-hitting poison for your brain. All right? Hard liquor, whiskey, vodka, uh, you know, all those kinds of hard liquors are really a deadly toxin to your brain. So if you're going to have it, what I say is have it in company. Don't ever drink alone. Uh, have it in the context of celebration or recognition, an event. That's actually fine. I, I think in moderation, a lot of moderation. Um, but don't drink regularly and don't drink alone. All right. Just remember, alcohol is a brain toxin. There's no way around it. It just is. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. The next habit is very common, and the doctor will now tell us more about it and its detrimental effects. The second thing you want to avoid, don't eat too much salt. Now, salt tastes good. Salt, you know, you get popcorn, you're going to put some salt on it. That makes it a lot tastier. And that's why at a restaurant, you ever watch in an open kitchen? Pay attention next time you're at a restaurant where they have an open kitchen or maybe a food channel and you watch somebody sprinkling salt in. Chefs pick up a lot of salt and they sprinkle it on because they know salt makes taste food taste good. Before it actually gets too salty, it just keeps on upping the ante of making the food taste good. But here's the deal. Salt raises your blood pressure. Raising your blood pressure actually uh, uh, can damage the lining that that ice skating rink of your blood vessels, guess what? Now, clots can actually form. That's why high blood pressure, hypertension, is a silent killer. It sets you up for stroke, okay? Uh, increases your stroke risk. So just keep your salt to modest levels. I would say enough to make your food taste good. Don't put extra salt uh, down as a reflex by any means, okay? And by the way, you can also get low sodium, uh, uh, things if you're buying it from a store. And if you are eating in a restaurant and the food is too salty, please send it back and tell the chef that they put too much salt in it. And they'll bring you back another one that doesn't have as much salt. Like I think the chefs need that feedback 
uh, uh, and uh, in order to be able to give you a healthy, enjoyable meal. All right, you can also ask the chef to cook, make a low low sodium, low, low salt version. You don't want to increase your risk for stroke. Oh no! The doctor will now describe a habit that is literally an epidemic in our society, which we should avoid. All right. Now the other thing you want to avoid is eating ultra processed foods. I told you about this already. Ultra processed foods damage your gut health. Poor gut health is poor brain health. Enough said. Uh, there's a lot that can be talked about with ultra processed foods, but you don't want to have that dysbiosis or sick gut bacteria, which can definitely uh, impact on your um, brain health. Oh no! The doctor will now describe another habit we need to shake. One little caution about drinking water these days that we know: look, bottled water is very, very popular, right? Like you go to any place. You know, if you're on, if you're, if you're taking a vacation and you're a tourist and you're going to go for a hike or you're going to go to the beach or whatever, what are you going to get? A bottle of water, plastic container with water. Now we now know that the plastic sheds particles, billions of particles into bottled water, and that's not good. So I urge you to drink water out of a glass if you can. All right. Might not be possible, and it's true. We're surrounded by plastic anyway, but th th these this day and age, if you know that plastic is found embedded in your blood vessels, it's embedded in the brain, it's found in your bloodstream, I mean, that's pretty scary. And in fact, recent research has shown that um, having plastic in the lipids that could be blocking your blood vessels increases your risk of heart attack or stroke by four times. And they've been able to find plastic particles in testicles, in semen and in the penis as well, all right? So that doesn't actually make you sit up and take note of that plastic water bottle. I don't know what will. Oh no. <laughs> the doctor will describe the last habit and give us a specific tip to help avoid this problem. Now the last thing you want to actually avoid is screwing up your sleep, all right? Uh, sleep is really important for brain health. There is uh, a, a sewer system in your brain called the glymphatic system. It's like the lymphatic system. It carries fluid in your brain. The glymphatic system is like the Paris sewers, um, which again, in Paris, there's like an ex extensive series of underground sewers that keep the city above uh, the street level clean. All right. And what's the, what brain does too with the glymphatic system is at night, when you actually are sleeping deeply, the sewer system opens up and you drain your brain out of all the toxins that have accumulated during the day. So if you want good brain health, you want to actually have good sleep as well. Sleep hygiene is a topic I'll, I'll do for another video, but in order to sleep well, here's one critical tip. And I know this is difficult to do even for me, all right? So I'm just telling you, it's hard for me, but it's really important if you want to get good sleep. Don't expose your eyes and hence your brain, right? Your eyes are just part of your brain to blue light that comes from a screen, like a phone, before you sleep. You kind of want to actually, like I said, this is difficult for me to do too. You kind of want to put down your screens for about two hours before you go to bed at night. I know you're saying good luck. Dr. Lee, but please try to do that um, uh, and because it will actually help you get a better night's sleep, better night's sleep, your glymphatics open up, you're draining the toxins from your brain, and then the more, next morning you're actually going to feel better, all right? That's actually um, uh, really, really important. If you don't, you're going to have be brain foggy, right? Not surprising because your toxins are still uh, in your sleep. The other thing you want to check out is that you might actually have sleep apnea that can interfere with sleep. So if your bed partner says that you're snoring all the time, doesn't matter if you're a big person or you're a skinny person, uh, the tissue in the back of your throat can enlarge. By the way, excess body fat, overconsumption. Uh, one of the first places that uh, you can actually grow extra fat is in the back of your tongue, by your throat. You got a fat back of your tongue. Uh, when you're sleeping and relaxed, it can collapse and you're gonna actually have sleep apnea. You're not gonna sleep well because th this fatty tissue is gonna collapse and you're gonna wake up startled and you're never quite getting enough sleep because the fatty tissue in the back of your throat is um, actually blocking uh, your ability to uh, get enough oxygen. So you're waking up all the time, all right? You won't even know it. You're just waking up all the time and you're snoring at the same time because all that fatty tissue is is just um, creating that funky uh, snoring sound when air is going in and when air is going out. 
All right, this is a medical issue, sleep apnea. You'd wanna talk about it with your doctor. There's a sleep study and sleep apnea is treatable. So something that you should um, uh, think about. One thing that you can do to reduce the consequences of sleep apnea is to improve your metabolism, lower that body fat, uh, and that actually can actually improve sleep apnea as well. Now I write in Eat to Beat Your Diet, again, this book, about um, uh, reducing tongue fat. It's an interesting little side fact. I'm not going to spoil it here. You got to read the book and check it out. Eat to beat your diet. Um, uh, and I talk about um, uh, how to actually, how tongue fat actually builds up uh, even in skinny people. So. Oh no! What? what? Next, watch the Dr. William Lee Club playlist for more information on the Nutritarian diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.